Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Kraus, and in this episode, as we continue exploring some of the stories in Ovid's Metamorphoses, we examine another story of how sorrow is a revealing testimony of the moving power of love by exploring the tragic story of Achis and Galatia. If Venus and Adonis is one of the most famous stories of love through sorrow, so too is the story of Achis and Galatia. The sorrowful lament of Achis and Galatia, crushed by the envious rage of the Cyclops, Palamephus, reveal the poignancy of love in a tragic world. Galatia was born from the lovely hands of the lonely sculptor Pygmalion, who was brought to new life through the beauty of his marble white statue turned real, as Ovid recounts this moment in his great poem. We read it here in Latin to have that lyricism, that erotic lyricism that Ovid is so famous for. In cubenska tora didit, escula visa tempera est, ad movitos et terum manibus quoque, pectora temptat, tentaptum molicit ibor, positigre rigore, subsidit digitis cadique. Where she lay, he kissed her, and she seemed warm to the touch, so kissing her again and caressing her breasts, the ivory grew soft in his fingers, and its hardness vanished into warm flesh. With Pygmalion now deceased, Galatia is free to roam the world, where she is beset by the lust of the beast Polyphemus. Caught between the monster's predations and his wild urge to kill, and the gentle love of Achis, Galatia is caught between a rock and a hard place. Like Venus and Adonis, this story of love between mortal and divine is free of the usual violent passions of the divine encroaching on the well realm of human mortals. Like Venus and Adonis, the gentle love between mortal and divine cannot be consummated. Yet the love shared between Achis and Galatia is touching and warming. It reveals their personalities. We learn something about the lovers in their fleeting moments together. It is not mere body heat that draws the two ill-fated lovers together. Personality draws them together as one. It is a love that is pure, a love that springs with joy and life, a purity and joy that makes Polyphemus rage with jealousy. Here, Ovid reflects on the tragedy of love triangles. The rage that a scorned lover feels, Polyphemus, is what compels him to violent action. If he cannot have the love of Galatia, no one can. Ovid here is remarkably modern in his outlook. The world of love is often messy, as we know today, from our own experiences. While some loves do consummate themselves in blissful happiness, as we saw with Perseus and Andromeda, other loves are beset by petty and violent rivalries and jealousies that lead to heartbreak and tragedy. Polyphemus's lament reveals the emptiness of jealousy, the envy that leads to violence. I'll gouge his living guts, I'll rend his limbs, and strewn them in the fields and into the sea, the beast says. Looking upon the star-crossed lovers, Polyphemus springs into action. He violently storms down upon them, startling Galatia, who flees into the sea, leaving Achis alone to flee for his life. Achis cries out as he runs, as he runs for help, as he runs for life. Help, Galatia! Father, mother, help! He cries out. But there is no one to help poor Achis. Polyphemus lifts up a boulder and hurls it at him, crushing him, his blood spilling out over the fields. The murderous Cyclops retreats to his cave, satisfied in the deadly deed done. Galatia returns 
after Polyphemus has retreated to his blood-soaked cave. She stares, tears flowing at the crushed body and spewing blood of her former lover. But the gods and fates take pity on Galatia's tears. With permission from heaven, Galatia turns Atchis's flowing blood into the river of life. The Achi in Sicily is the river that bears Achis's name, the blood transformed into an everlasting spring of love and life as the final farewell Galatia could give to her lover. In this story, Achis overcomes death through metamorphosis by love. The love that he shared with Galatia empowers Galatia to bring about his final transformation, his final metamorphosis, into a river of life that stands to memorialize the brief love the two shared. Rather than sink into the dust of the ground to be forgotten forever, Achis's blood is transformed into a beautiful spring of life that outlives the beast who killed him. Once more we see in this tragic story how sorrowful tears, tears reveal the spirit of love and how that love can overcome the tragedy of death.